Welcome back to Engineering Ethics and the final part of Chapter 7, where we will discuss whistleblowing and organizations. To start, we need to define what is whistleblowing. Whistleblowing is simply the act of blowing a whistle. Okay, so why do people do that? To alert others to a certain danger, like lifeguards in swimming pools, for example, or to request attention, like referees in soccer fields. So how does whistleblowing translate into organizations? Whistleblowing in organizations is the reveal of confidential information that the engineer deems of great importance to the public because it violates their safety. Another medium for revealing such information is the governmental route, where the information is delivered to the authorities. When this information is revealed outside the company, it means it has gone externally, and this is only done when the internal ways of whistleblowing have been exhausted. This implies that there are two types of whistleblowing, internal and external. Internal whistleblowing means that the information may go higher in the company, but it will stay inside the company, and the public won't know about it. External whistleblowing, on the other hand, occurs when internal whistleblowing gives no results and the information is announced publicly. Another question pops up. When is it okay to blow the whistle and state that something is wrong? The initial condition for any whistleblowing scenario is harm assessment. The engineer would question if the negative effects of a product or an activity would pose threats to the public. If the answer is yes, then something must be done about it. First, they try to resolve it internally by talking to their superiors. If that action yielded no results, then it is time to go public by telling the media or the government. After answering the question of what warrants whistleblowing, another question arises. When is it obligatory to blow the whistle? An engineer must blow the whistle when the harm starts becoming real and clear, like in the Love Canal case study. When people started getting sick, the information about the dump site should have been made public. All the evidence must be documented and the employee must make sure it is legitimate evidence. If you are a professional in an organization that is taking part in unethical conduct, you must make sure that you avoid being complicit in this misconduct. The first checkpoint is to make sure that the critical information that you find is derived from your work at this organization and not by any external means. Second, you need to be working out of your free will at this company and not be forced to work there. If both conditions are met, then you can proceed to whistleblowing by fully understanding what your company is doing wrong and collecting evidence. If you believe that by staying silent you will contribute to the harm done by, uh, by the company to society, then it is obligatory to blow the whistle. Before we jump into the case study of the video, here are some whistleblowing tips. First, always check the available venues for whistleblowing internally and externally so that you can make the most out of the available options. Assess if there is anyone that can help you out and you can share information with them or you should keep your protest to yourself. Don't make it personal. Focus on the ideas and on the harms. Making it personal may result in hostilities that you really don't want. Keep evidence and keep written records of all conversations. Emails can help. You will need them to prove your point. Do not just object. Present a solution as well. The best engineers come with solutions to problems, and coming with a solution will show your organization that it is not personal. Our case study for this video is an ideal whistleblowing scenario from the pharmaceutical industry. GlaxoSmithKline or as it is more familiarly known as GSK, had several violations for health and safety in one of their plants or factories. Those violations have led to mix-ups 
where one medicine was packaged as another. This is highly dangerous and can be deadly. One employee noticed these infractions and reported it immediately to upper management with evidence. While she was waiting for upper management to solve the issue internally, she kept collecting data and tracking the impact of the situation. After the damages have escalated, she went to check with upper management. She realized that nothing was done to solve the problem. At this point, the only solution was to go public and blow the whistle. Check the remaining details of the story in the attached video. With the GSK case study, we reached the end of chapter 7. In the next video, we will go over the final chapter of the course, chapter 8, where we will discuss engineers and the environment. So stay tuned.